Okay, uh, welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is the February 16th edition here in 2023 uh, for EU and US. Uh, today I, we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verrockton. Uh, welcome, and thank you all for joining as well, as uh, I appreciate it always. Uh, for the agenda, a uh, couple, uh, couple notes here. So one, uh, we have the January newsletter was published last week. Um, we have an update on the GSOC preparation. Uh, and a link to the blog post that John Mark had written uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we have the Jenkins Awards for 2023. Uh, these have just been opened and we'll go into a little bit of info on how to participate. Uh, there's um, discussion about the documentation, documentation transition to Java 17. Um, we're approaching fast. So uh, talking about getting that put into the documentation as a basis to use. Uh, and then something that Mark and I had been discussing previously, uh, an end of life checklist for documentation. So uh, making sure that if something reaches end of life, we're making sure that uh, we can update and remove any instances that we need to. Uh, there's some uh, information regarding the CentO 7 end of life. Um, this is just a proposal at this point in time. So just discussion, nothing um, moving just yet. Uh, and Mark has added a note about end of life website and Jenkins. Um, so we'll check in uh, when we get to that point and Mark can tell us more about that. If that's okay. Uh, anything else that we need to add to the agenda or does that cover uh, everything for the most part? Cool. Great for me. Let's see. Our, and we're being recorded, right? Gavin, you've got yep. a recording on. Yep. This right. is, that is correct. It is recording. Um, so uh, first things first, uh, again, action items, just the January newsletter was recently published. Um, again, uh, we all had our big, big 22 recap newsletter uh, in January. And uh, this math month, we just want to share, again, what we always want to share, highlights from around Jenkins and uh, important updates from the SIGA leaders. Um, and uh, just real quickly, big thank you and shout out to Roxanne from the CD Foundation for creating these header images. Uh, really spices up the blog post and appreciate the branding. It's really nice. Uh, next up, so uh, Google Summer of Code is approaching as well. Uh, we've, uh, we're submitting our organization application, I think within the next day or two. Uh, so uh, we're, we'll find out next week on the 22nd um, who, what the organizations are that will be part of the Google Summer of Code. Uh, we're expecting Jenkins to be uh, announced as that, but if there is some reason that it's not, we'll go from there. But uh, we're uh, expecting to be part of Google Summer of Code this year. Uh, and uh, there will be, there's additional timelines for Google Summer of Code, but uh, everything's going to happen after the uh, the organization uh, participation announcement. So uh, we'll discuss that when it comes down. Uh, next up, so the Jenkins Awards for 2023 have officially opened. Uh, these have been, uh, these are now uh, three separate GitHub issues that Alyssa Tong has opened up. Uh, and we have uh, one for most valuable Jenkins contributor, the Jenkins security MVP, and the most valuable Jenkins advocate. Uh, each of these issues is uh, its own separate conversation area to nominate and um, discuss uh, candidates for that award specifically. Um, previously, we would host this on the CD Foundation site repo. Uh, this year, the projects are hosting them themselves, which is why we have these issues on GitHub this year. Um, I've also gone ahead and created a label specifically for community stuff so that uh, we can tag things accordingly and make sure that people see that this is something for everyone to participate in as opposed to uh, an issue to resolve or something like that. Um, nominations are completely open, so uh, you can make your case, nominate whoever you would like to. And uh, yeah, uh, there's some information here, there's some instructions. Uh, and one thing to be aware of is that uh, the last year's winners cannot win the same award this year. So, um, for example, uh, for the most valuable Jenkins contributor, Basil won last year, so he can't win this year, unfortunately. Uh, but he can still be nominated for the other things. So, um, yeah, anyone can still, uh, you can nominate anyone, everything's open. Uh, and then voting will take place via Google form once 
the nomination period has closed. Um, that is March 3rd. So that Friday, March 3rd is when nominations close and voting will open the following week and will close at the end of March. Uh, and then the results will be announced at CDCon uh, along with presenting the winners with their awards. So uh, lots to look forward to. And the this is something, uh, since we're hosting them in our repository, it's something new for this year, um, but uh, they're, they're there. It's a great opportunity to really highlight and um, show gratitude and, and appreciation for someone that's done a lot for Jenkins this past year. Uh, so if you have anyone in mind, please go ahead and submit a nomination. Uh, next up, uh, the documentation transition to Java 17. Uh, so this is something that's going to be happening in around April, May uh, with the newest Debian uh, 12 release. So uh, we're going to transition to using Java 17 in the documentations for installation uh, and other processes. This is not to say that Java, 7, Java 11 support is being dropped, but we now support Java 11 and 17, and with 17 being uh, or having more functionality and being more uh, newer, uh, the idea is that we move people and encourage people to get on to Java 17 sooner than later. Um, we can move forward a lot smoother. There's less worry uh, down the line as time moves on. When things approach end of life, we can avoid a lot of that if we be uh, if we are proactive about it now. Um, and this is going to be uh, across all the Jenkins documentation. This won't be just installing, but um, this is something that we'll have to work and, de and develop as uh, we get closer and closer to that date. Uh, and then one thing that um, I'm going to be doing is emailing Tim Jacome and letting him know about this transition so that there are no surprises. He is release officer. So it's better to make sure everyone's on the same page and aware of what's going on as opposed to surprises. Uh, and then uh, again, this is something that Mark and I were just discussing, uh, but having an end of life checklist is something that we can really consider and, and probably should have uh, with things approaching end of life. Um, there are a handful of things coming up within the next 12 months or so. Um, so Ubuntu 18, Alpine 3.14 and 3.15, um, those three are all gonna be happening this year. And so we wanna make sure that we can check throughout the Jenkins site repository uh, and any other locations that they might contain some of this information or documentation and ensure that it's updated or removed. Um, this can cause issues down the line if things are not updated accordingly, uh, or it could be misinforming users who are trying to perform many of the actions here in Jenkins. So this is a big one. Um, and this is really important to make sure is taken care of prior to any big release and any release at all, but this is something that I think is a great idea and something that I want to work on and uh, get created so that we have that that just that peace of mind going forward. Uh, and then these are some of the idea the places that uh, we were discussing checking. So stuff like obviously the documentation, uh, the packaging sites and repository, uh, the release repository. Again, for things that if there are uh, is there's tooling that depends on certain versions of it and that version's reaching end of life, we can run into issues. So um, that's another big one, container images and uh, the Jenkins updates site. So uh, we've got a great list going. If there are more places to we can check or that we should be checking, I'm uh, more than happy to entertain everything. Please you know, drop a message here, add it as a comment, send me a message. Um, regardless, uh, this is something that we wanna make sure is front of mind when these major changes come. Uh, next up is the prep for Cent07 end of life. Um, so uh, Mark, I was wondering if you'd be okay speaking to it a little bit. I know sure. some, but you know the story. Yeah, so the, the idea here is that Cent07, the Jenkins project officially only supports operating systems which are supported by the upstream provider. If an upstream provider ends support, the Jenkins project ends support for that thing. So that means that CentOS 7 would officially be supported until June of 2024. However, we're seeing the erosion of support for CentOS 7 elsewhere in the world. 
And with that erosion of support and my personal biases against it, it's weighing in that I think we ought to consider dropping it. So some of the, the compelling things to say there are, hey, our RPM installer doesn't support it now. And we deliver a, a Docker container, we deliver one or more Docker container images with CentOS 7, but the upstream of CentOS 7 container image on which we are building has been unmaintained and deprecated since late 2022. So we're building on, on something that our own standards say we would not support. The upstream doesn't is not maintained and therefore we should, we should consider getting rid of it. So the steps I think that are needed is, I think this one, I'm gonna go ahead and propose a Jenkins enhancement proposal, a JEP, that mm -hmm. suggests to accelerate the end of life for CentOS 7. Now that doesn't mean it's immediate. It rather means we will go through a systematic discipline process to drop and clarify to people that we are dropping support for CentOS 7. I will be overjoyed when we get to the day that it is dropped, but we're not there yet. Right. And no, I did and I did I did do some work on this. So the documentation references to CentOS 7 to be removed. I submitted a pull request to reduce the CentOS 7 and references in our documentation. I was surprised at how relatively few there were. So it wasn't it wasn't nearly as dismaying as I thought it was going to be. There there just weren't that many that many places where we referred to CentOS 7 and where we did it was a good thing to say, hey, let's add Alma Linux and Rocky Linux because mm -hmm. They are also valid clones of their valid Red Hat style distributions. Got it. And yeah, and we can see here in the pull request, this is the one you're referring to. Everything's, it's been merged already and uh, everything's updated. So that, that's great. Thank you very much for uh, taking that on. Well, and, and now one, one positive there is it means the video that showed how to install on CentOS 7 is now gone. Mm -hmm. It was replaced with how to install on Rocky 9 which is a current version of the operating system. So it was it was nice that Darren had done a, a replacement video. Nice. Darren's such a good guy. He always comes in uh, when he needs to. So great. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. And this kind of goes back into the end of life checklist and everything that we were discussing as well. So super relevant, super applicable to things that we want to accomplish and set up and, and template out eventually. So. Um, yeah, super important. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, uh, Mark, I noticed you had put this this last item on here, the end of life website in Jenkins. Yeah. Um, so could you could you click that, yeah. Kevin, and let's talk about it for a minute. So one of the challenges for me is how do I know when things are reaching end of life? And mm -hmm. other people had this challenge, and somebody created this open source, open main, maintained website called endoflife.date. And it's actually so good that I've been using it for months now without realizing that it was entirely an open source effort. <laughs> I thought, oh, somebody was really nice. Some business did the very nice thing. Turns out it's not a business at all. Somebody just did this because they had a, a question they wanted to, they wanted to solve their question and they found a way to present it very clearly. And the person that interacted with me is actually someone I've interacted with in the Jenkins community in years past. So it was, oh, wow, that's cool. This is a name I recognize. So, so what you see on the left is various products and okay. their end of life. And so if you scroll down, Kevin, you can find Jenkins here. Mm -hmm. uh, this was added only a few days ago to the list. But here you see what it's showing is a brief description of Jenkins and then category, the type of release it's documenting how long ago it was released, is it currently supported and what's its version number? Mm -hmm. wow. And the story that's being told here is that we support the current weekly release, 2.391. We mm -hmm. support the current LTS line, currently 2.375.3. We do not support those older versions. So is there some kind of automation? Uh, there so is. that you don't have to make, oh, okay. Because I didn't see you come each and every week say, oh, um, 
Chenzo right. weekly or cool. Right. Thanks. And that's and and that's part of the elegance of this thing, right? Is the the weekly version number, I did nothing to update that. And it's going to it should just keep up to date. And wow. likewise, the latest on the LTS line should keep up to date. The thing that my pull request was changing was the original layout that the the first creator had done confused me. And I was able to persuade him that, hey, we should change this layout to look more like Alpine's layout. So if Kevin, if you'll click the Alpine mm -hmm. Linux on the left, you'll see how similar we are to Alpine Linux. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A release, when it was released, does it have green or red? And what's the latest version? And if you were to look at Debian, you'd see it's, we look a lot like Debian as well, right? So it's, it's the same pattern of, okay, let's, let's look like these other very popular open source projects. Now we're not nearly as exhaustive as, for instance, if you look at a, a product that has strong commercial backing, look at you Ubuntu all the way at the bottom. This one has a commercial life cycle and has a hardware component and has all sorts of things that go with commercial operating systems, right? And and so it represents that in a much more complex and much more useful for its consumers way. But for us, I think the simple presentation we're using is a lot better. And we don't, we certainly don't have this kind of tiered life cycle that Ubuntu does for theirs. Uh, mm. Mark, sorry, yes. I have an idea. Oh, she says, um, not that good, but uh, we have the king of automation uh, in the Jenkins team, you know, Hervé Lemur. And I was wondering if uh, we could use that API, because it looks like this website has an API, so that we know that some components or OS version that we are using are not supported anymore and put them automatically in the documentation or even in our containers mm. or you know that what you wanted to do with the JEP, you know, no matter message detecting that the OS we are running on is not supported anymore or things like that. Good, good suggestion. It might be an interesting exploration. I, th I think this is actually a static website generated I, without presenting yeah, an, API. an api yeah but right okay. so so but by all means click the api link kevin let's mm -hmm. let's explore it i don't know what what it provides as an api but it if if that could provides, help us why not yes it provides mm -hmm. a rabbit hole that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> well, well and and hey that that rabbit hole is quite helpful because for me for instance as the maintainer of the platform labeler plugin I keep track of the end of life dates of project of oh. operating systems so that I know when to say it's unsupported. But this API, if it can really answer that, may then be able to fill in these fields oh, so that cool. I don't have to bother with it anymore. Uh huh. A little bit of GitHub action, maybe, and good to go. Well, actually, in this case, they're just they're just json requests so no no yeah I, i'll just put them into my jenkins file of course so <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah like and if, go ahead kevin oh no i was just gonna say looking at the uh responses it looks like you do get all the information that's available there through the api so um, right it does look like it's available and usable at the very least what it takes i'm yeah i'm not 100 yeah sure well that, and, and and good point so why not let's let's do some looking and consider because we certainly already are doing website generation right our mm -hmm. our site generator is a program and the fact that it generates a static site is not a barrier to this kind of thing because we could read this data and insert inject it into the static site mm -hmm. yeah Cool. And I'm thinking too, this, this could potentially even tie back into what we were talking about with the end of life checklist and uh, can help us facilitate that by telling us, hey, these are all the things that are end of life at this time. Great. Now I know what to look for. And right. so, yep. yeah, I mean, that sort of thing would be really neat to have integrated into it. But Ingenious idea, Bruno. Well, well thought. Good. You're welcome. As long as I don't have to implement it, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Let's get there first, but maybe. Um, 
But yeah, uh, so that takes care of everything that I had on my uh, agenda for Doc's office hours. Is there anything else that uh, we want to talk about or any other items that we want to add on here? That's all for me. That's all okay. for me too. Okay. Well, um, if that's okay with everyone, then uh, in the interest of time, we'll call it here. Uh, thank you very much as always. The recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining and Thanks. take care. Thank you.